Valence electron symmetry like palladium, the PGM metals, is dodecaecosa. So that's creating a, a phase conjugating or implosive field dielectric. Remember, the nature of phase conjugation, that implosion, is inherently broad spectral. So if you're doing it right, you expect that you're going to have harmonics dielectrically, harmonics sonically, harmonics microwave, inherently broad spectral. That's the nature of successful heterodyning by conjugating. So with this technology, your turn this down a bit. With this technology, your ability to tell your architect whether or not he's going to get paid is measurable. If you know how to make a capacitor to make life, you should be hired as an architect. If you don't, please go back to school. This is what Hermes had to say. This is his opinion. This is what the training was about. If you can make the electric field that causes life. So, how do we do this commercially? Now, there was just a few other things I was supposed to show you on my little list here. Examples of a similar phase conjugate dielectric, a royal crown. What's the physics when you put a royal crown on that if you do not think a shareable thought, you will go insane? Anybody understand the physics? Right? You can, this, this, frankly, is starting to fall apart. It's not very, very accurate. But the radii of these is correctly in the microwave to be bioactive, and the material, the gold, and the, if the placement were correct, if anybody wants to try it, yes, yes, okay. you just very slowly just put it on, try to align it a little bit, even though it's a little bit falling apart. Ideally, it would face the temple precisely, and this would be straight flat. And you create a little bit of phase conjugating dielectric implosively called the royal crown. And if you can stay in the center of that implosive charge, then you can think a shareable thought, and you may be king or queen. Otherwise, you may be toast. In other words, as your mentation speeds up, because charge compression defines attention effectively, that you have to locate which waves can propagate, which is to say can be shared. In physics, that's called coherence at its climax condition, which is fractality. So the climax condition. Uh, yes, dear. I had that almost today, and I was saying, now, and he said, are you feeling anything? And I said, it feels cool. And I was saying, how does it cool your hands? Yes, it feels cool, yes. It's interesting, it's interesting that some people feel that as a bit of coolness. Other people feel a bit of compression. It depends. But you are feeling, if you feel a property, a bit of electron wind. Now, if I were to take that off very slowly, very slowly. If it was effective, it would almost feel like it was still on. You feel a little residue, a little? And this actually can be turned into a commercial therapy for attention deficit, actually. The physics of the cone hat for the dunce, for example. So I'm just giving you practical examples of bioactive electric field. How does an egg make life, etc. A church we talked about. Now, I promise to tell you how we convert that into a commercial technology. And Sal is going to tell you more about that from his measurements. Sal is a PhD chemist who has a lot of experience and devoted a lot of time in UK to help us measure these phenomena. But I'll show you briefly what we did. We took this, um, I'll just bring this up so that people out there can see. We took the natural phase conjugate dielectric, and I took resin crystals. And the resin crystals are a resin which uh, we, we're idealizing the molecular content. And I feel that we need work on that. But then with um, advice from Bob Bratch on how to set up the piezoelectric oscillators, I then added my beautiful frequency recipe for implosion. And that, that is going to remain a little bit confidential, but it's based, I can tell you, it's based on how I derived hydrogen. I'll give you a clue, okay? Anyway, so I complex heterodyne frequency signature while the resin is crystallizing, and these crystals, man, actually, to be honest with you, they're so powerful that I had to take these things out of my basement into a metal container and hide them outside and could not carry them with me because they actually speed up metabolism for better or for worse. It's not always good to speed up metabolism. Hello, somebody who has Kundalini should know. <laughs> I speak fast for that reason. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> at, at, at any rate, so these are bioactive, extremely bioactive. It's like 10 times as strong. If you want to pass these around, feel free. Anybody who hasn't felt them, you're welcome to. You can feel a little bit of, uh, 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 yes, feel free. A little bit of cool wind. This one might be even a little bit stronger. Try that. Yeah, for fun. Yeah. Yeah. 
So these things are like that, except about mm, 15 or 20 times stronger. They're very powerful. And Sal helped me, and we placed them around fermentation and did very accurate laboratory measurements that Sal is going to tell you about later. And we measured, and he's going to show you the graphs and explain how we did it. He brilliantly discovered a new assay technique, if I may say, humbly for you and me. <laughs> Good technique. To measure the increase in glucose consumption as a way to quantify metabolic rate, and in fact showed like 40 to 50 percent increase in the speed at which fermentation happens in yeast. All you do, we put these around the jar, and we test it with and without, and 40 to 50 percent change in fermentation. Applications? Hello. You have compost piles, digesters. Yes, beer. Thank you. I'm sorry. We sh I should have listed that first. I really apologize. Terrible. I can get my prayers. Beer. Excuse me. Right. Beer. I, okay. Uh, wine, uh, yogurt, etc. So, but that's just the beginning. Now, there are many. I, I don't want to kid you here. This is powerful and is worth billions. It's a very powerful commercial technology. But I'm not kidding anybody here. Bob Dratch is correct. There are hazards here. You can drive a, a life living system to completion too fast, apoptosis. You know, you really need to study what you're doing and measure it carefully. We can make life and we can make too much life. It's clear. But I just want to tell you, so what we call this is a phase conjugate dielectric. Now you can read about hundreds of papers on phase conjugate dielectrics, self-organization and life, in addition to mine, on the web by Tom Bearden. And that list is again at goldenmean.info slash biofield. I recommend it. It's just an electric field that really gets around. <laughs> and this is the nature of life. It's a very radiant charge field. It's the planes of Sharon, of how you go to heaven. It's the electric field, da da da. So we have this on our list. These are types. I'm just giving you We had the royal crown, just so you have a summary when we're done. And then we're going to abbreviate phase conjugation as PC, phase conjugate dielectrics. Now this is a whole big, huge field. Um, Sal is going to tell you a little bit more about his work on using harmonics, for example, to create vitamin C and others. The frequency recipe, and we could talk about that frequency recipe at length. Let me give you just a little clue. Here's a little clue. If you take the wavelength of Planck and golden ratio, you can create music that is implosive. Okay? Now we actually did that in the Anta Karena experiments. And we and this is related to the frequencies I use to trigger those crystals. What we found is if you play those frequencies from a computer audio digitally synthesized, basically, unfortunately, most every sensitive person in the room is going to feel nausea. <laughs> Hello. It feels like the Borg are pushing on your, your guts. You feel your met metabolism accelerating. But frankly, you know what it feels like? It feels like somebody's broadcasting noise on DNA radio, and it ain't pretty. However, you know, we should reserve the bandwidth for DNA. Somebody should just tell the Federal Communications Commission. <laughs> but, but however, if you teach a living human choir to sing those frequencies, the work of Christian Kirisu in UK, who's traveled and talked with us many times, also teaches sacred architecture. The House Whisperer, hi Christian. Um, that you make the same frequencies with human beings singing, and you have waves and waves of absolute bliss. Now, and I, I don't want to mislead you, it's hard to teach a choir to sing golden ratio, but if you succeed, it's very, very cool. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I ask you to think as an electrical engineer, as I do, what's the difference between a digital computer synthesizing a series of frequencies to make implosion and a human choir singing the same frequencies? Pardon? Not shareable. Not shareable. Well, you see, look, all the implosive frequencies are is they're creating the wave guide to the share point, the implosion point, the fractal point. However, What's going through is just like, remember when they had the Tesla watch, Andrea Puharik? <laughs> you know, if you step under an old growth tree, one of the reasons you're more likely to have clairvoyance is because the old growth trees, harmonics, are capacitively inclusive, including the Schumann resonance. And you're more likely to have bliss. 
Now, if you take those frequencies out, as we did in psychotronics, and use a piece of aluminum foil to radiate it into an auditorium called the Psychotronics Convention, <laughs> remember, this is my youth now, I was, I was young once, uh, you know, you can actually dial up the frequencies and you can induce bliss in the auditorium. We will need to honor Bob Beck here, one of my teachers. Anyway, the point is that when you make a watch to make the Schumann resonance, your body feels about one minute of bliss, and then it goes, oh shit, I just got my baby bottle in my mouth, and oh, there's no milk coming out the nipple. It's called, what do they call it for babies? The pacifier. Yeah. So, you see, the eight hertz wave tells your body for one second, oh, somebody just switched on DNA radio, cool. However, then they find the radio's on, but nothing's coming through, oh shit. That's the same thing with synthetic versus real life. So I can make these harmonics, but I need to do it in an environment surrounded by real life. I mean a room full of biologic materials. I mean with the real intent of the priesthood to make these. If I do this in a metal room, aluminum and steel, full of electromog, smog, and people with bad emotions, I'm imploding the environment for better or for worse, and in that case it's for worse. So I'm just introducing you to this idea of phase conjugate dielectrics. Yes, it's cool physics. And yes, we may need you know, a spiritual training to do this properly. Okay, so we have a dramatic new industry that we're proposing, and we think that industry can be very powerful. And I should say very happily that one of the world's largest biotech laboratories in Europe, in Madrid, and the molecular biologist leader of the whole team is absolutely committed to replicating these results and working with us now, and it's really cooking. We think we'll have a powerful commercial technology. For example, a coating industry to coat the inner surface of digesters and beer makers and wine makers and your compost pile. Do you know why your compost pile gets hotter if you steer magnetic lines in? For the same reason, your compost pile would get warmer if you put the correct material around it, because you accelerate metabolic rate by charge compression. Yeah? <clears throat> so that's called the fire of life. You know, in biodynamic circles, you're not any good unless your compost pile is hot enough to cook your dinner. Right? Can you build a fire? <laughs> this is accelerating metabolism. Okay, last subject. How am I doing for time, Roger? I've only got two, two minutes. Great. Okay, last subject. Phase conjugate magnetics. Now, and the treatment of water. This is our final subject as an example of a bioactive electric field. <clears throat> Phase conjugate optics, as you know, was well documented to self organize in physics. Phase conjugate dielectrics, a few physicists understand, but you can create self organization there. And we're pioneering that work. Phase conjugate magnetics, I invented the term. The idea, the technology. Although I would like to credit uh, Joe of the Joe Cell in Australia. Although he doesn't talk physics, he has some wonderful ideas in this regard, and I want to honor wonderful Joe. He's a friend. So, phase conjugate magnetics. Here I have two magnets. And these magnets are neodymium boron, and they are strong enough to cause injury. These are very strong and dangerous magnets. I have, if you could zoom in here with the camera. Yeah, thank you. Okay. The black tape marks the north pole of both of these magnets. North, south, north, south. So the north pole is attracted to the south pole. I have a special material in between these. I want to thank Bill Donovan for his help here. And we discovered that if you understand that the magnetic field, if it's properly aligned, is octahedral, 